1964, Never Never Land opened in Point Defiance, a park featuring scenes of fairy tales and nursery rhymes that delighted visitors for more than 30 years. What remained of the park was removed in 2010, but a Tacoma father and son are working to bring the park back for new generations to enjoy. Dave and Brandon Mitzel are here to tell us more about their mission. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Obviously, you do not remember. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it must have had special yes. meaning to you. Yes, yes. I, I actually grew up in Yakima Valley over in eastern Washington. So coming to Never Neverland, which I only did a couple times, was like Disneyland to me. Um, we didn't, you know, go fly a long ways to go places. We actually just came over here to visit Relation and I visited a couple times. I got the bank in 1968. Yep. It's a little Humpty Dumpty. I'm so impressed that you <laughs> kept it intact. <laughs> well, I've marked Humpty on it Dumpty a little bit. Humpty Dumpty has but, not uh, fallen apart. No, no. But, but we lots of it. people love this park and it yes. was sort of a, you know, one of these things in the Northwest that mm -hmm. when it went away, people were, you know, pretty sad about that. What mm -hmm. happened to the existing structures and the figures that were there? Well, the structures were all demolished in 2010 um, and uh, a lot of the figures were stored. They closed in 2001 and they were stored in the Pagoda, which is at Point Defiance, in the basement. Unfortunately, in 2011, there was a fire and it destroyed many of the figures. It melted. Most of the figures melted and um, they then moved them to a different site and that's where they're at now. Yeah. And, um, and then the structures were just all demolished in 2010. Uh, so and things are just gone. You're starting. They're gone. Yeah. It's been abandoned. Starting from scratch. Absolutely. We're picking up the pieces, and that's <laughs> going to take some time. Some to, time. Yeah. You're raising money for this and trying to get others interested as Correct. well, right? Correct. Brandon, you're how old? Fourteen. Fourteen. So you're like <laughs> negative years <laughs> yeah. away from this. Why is this important to you? Well, because I used to, I grew up with a bunch of people talking about Never Neverland, how great it was, and the nostalgia of it, and then. I learned that it was all gone and I went in 2015 to go see it and nothing was there and I wanted to know what the remnants of it, what was actually there, so I researched and I noticed that a lot of people that actually worked on it, like John Hewitt, he wanted it to come back as well and he wished someone would have rebuilt it. And so you know, off you go. This is the kind of mission that a lot of people might think of. It would cross their mind. They might do a little reading. Yeah, yeah. But then <laughs> to actually jump in and yes. do it, what got you across that bridge? Brandon. He's the driver. He, yeah. he, every day, it's never, never land. And some days I have to just leave the house and go outside and take a break. <laughs> um, Brandon has been driven by this. And I don't know where it comes from, but uh, he, I'm in the car seat in the passenger seat and he's driving the car and I'm just kind of telling him where to go, but he's driving and um, he's nonstop. He's going to get this thing open and I'm just there to help him out, you know, being that I'm a little older than he is. Just team <laughs> yeah. You and me both. So, Brandon, you, you are going to be competing against, you know, giant roller coasters and people going to Disneyland and that sort of thing. So what is your vision for what this would be if the park reopened? Well, we wanted to add a few new things to keep it kind of interactive because later in later years they kind of started removing the interaction. Like the, at one point there was rats that went up the clock and they removed that for reasons. <laughs> but, well, no. they might have had yeah. their reasons. <laughs> uh, how would you modernize things? Well, what we want to do is add like a new area of the park where it was a trackless train ride and we got, and it was like an intercom kind of like a tram mm -hmm. and you got to go through a new part of the park with more figures and swap them around and have a different kind of story to go along with it. Mm -hmm. So what are the steps that you have to go through? What What is mm -hmm. the, the plan? Well, the biggest thing is, is rela building relationships. Um, being that the park kind of deteriorated over time and then eventually just was demolished, we're got, we, our focus is to reestablish relationships with people that don't even know much about Never Neverland. I've contacted Metro Parks and the couple people that I've worked with and talked to weren't even here. They grew up somewhere else. So I, you have to go back and try to 
talked to the original creator, which is Alfred Peterson. We've talked to Jim Reuter, who is the uh, 15 years managing the park day to day. He still lives in Tacoma. And so we had to reestablish relationships with a lot of these people that actually created the park and start basically from scratch. But of course, they're excited. I mean, this because is like... Because they remember what it was. Yeah. And, and you've heard from people, Brandon, you mentioned it too, that you've heard from people who used to go who are mm. super excited about yeah. maybe this being created again. Right, yeah. right. What do they say? Well, they're really excited. They say like, oh, I remember all the memories that I went there and I'm glad to share it with my kids, which is a big part of it because yes. they Huge take their thing. kids. Yes. Too. So we're looking at the old entrance, right? Yeah, yes. that's what actually Jim showed us the snow pictures. And then yeah. now there's just nothing there. Yeah. Would this be in the same area? Well, we're, we're trying to do that. Right now there's some plans. Uh, there's a Fort Nisqually, which is right next door, and they do have plans to expand that a little bit. But uh, our goal, and everyone on our Facebook, we have over 1,200 followers now, really wanted to come back to the original site. And there's so many things still there, just, you know, uh, nature has taken its course and covered it all up. But when we go and investigate and research and walk through, we found a lot of things that are still there. It's just hidden. And like Jack and Jill's well is still there. Really? I didn't realize it was there until just recently in a visit we found it. Jim Reuter helped us find it because he kind of knew where it was. And through the bushes, overgrown bushes, and the leaves had started to fall, mm -hmm. there it was. And it was just, in, he was so surprised <laughs> to find magical. it. Yeah. So You guys have to keep us posted yes, on how this yeah, goes. But I love the father and son and the, <laughs> the sort of... Well, I won't say it's quixotic because I don't yeah. think it's something that can't be right. done, but yeah. it'll be really interesting right. to, to see how yes. this mission goes. We Thank you. Up next, author Andrew Marble shares about his new book that covers the life of General John Shalikashvili and what we can all learn from his unusual life.